Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and we're kicking off today's festivities with a relatively short clip from a battle played by tryhard Dodge dealership, no prizes for guessing what he does for a living, in the US Navy Tier 9 destroyer, the excellent USS Fletcher. The reason this clip's being featured is because of the award that tryhard Dodge dealership manages to pick up during the course of this battle. It's one of the more rare awards in World of Warships, the Double Strike Medal. In order to earn it, you have to sink two enemy ships within 10 seconds of each other. So it's not an easy award to achieve, particularly not when you've just been flushed out of your own smokescreen by torpedoes fired by an enemy Benham, which led to you being spotted by an enemy Assasio, which led to you getting shot at by half of the enemy team, resulting in a knocked out engine and a forced use of your damage control. But at least some of those torpedoes that he was able to get away before he was forced to evacuate look like they're going to hit the enemy Richelieu. And they are going to hit the enemy Richelieu. But that's not all, because they also hit the Asashio, and the torpedoes that he fired around the other side of the island claimed the life of the enemy Benham. So while technically Trihorn Dodge dealership did manage to get a double strike, he actually killed three enemy ships within 10 seconds of each other. And if you ask me, I think he was cheated. Meanwhile, moving on to today's main event, in an all tier 6 battle in the Russian tier 6 battleship, the Ismail, this is destroyer Hayashimo. Possibly named after the Yugamo class destroyer of the same name, Action stations. but if we're being completely realistic it's almost certainly far more likely that he is in fact named after the weeb ship girl of the same name from the popular browser game Kantai Collection. And there's nothing wrong with that. We're not judging anybody here. I'm certainly not going to be the first one to start throwing stones given my man cave model collection. So, yeah, anyway. Moving on swiftly. So, the Ismail, tier 6 Russian battleship. Or is it? Because the Ismail's pretty fast with a top speed of 28.5 knots and she packs a lot of firepower with 12 14 inch guns. But she does have some weaknesses in her armor layout. Her bows are actually less well armoured than her predecessor at tier 5, and she is nowhere near as well all round armoured as her successor at tier 7, the Sinop. She has a large citadel that's very easily penetrated if she shows a broadside, and her deck armour is also relatively weak, making her susceptible to plunging fire at long range. Hmm. Let's just think about this for a minute. Fast, lots of big guns. Armour unreliable. That's 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 a battle cruiser, isn't it? I do realise, of course, that labelling anything as a battle cruiser is fighting talk here in World of Warships, and many of you are going to have a fit down below in the comments. But well, you know, if it looks like a battle cruiser, smells like a battle cruiser, and tastes like a battle cruiser, you can call it a large cruiser, a heavy cruiser, or a pocket battleship if you want. But I'm just going to go ahead and call it a battle cruiser. I realise that more than a hundred years after the Battle of Jutland, when so many British battle cruisers exploded as dramatically and fatally as they did, the debate still rages on as to what exactly constitutes a battle cruiser, and it's certainly a debate that isn't going to be settled in the comments of a YouTube video. But we have far more important things to occupy ourselves with here today, although I'm positive that people are going to be arguing about battle cruisers in the comments anyway. Speaking of cruisers, however, and things exploding dramatically and violently, that Trento is looking like a fairly good candidate. Italian cruisers, of course, still quite new. They've still got that new car smell about them, haven't they? That Trento, however, is definitely no longer in showroom condition. And he is, in fact, about to give us a classic demonstration of how not to use an Italian cruiser smokescreen. The smokescreens on Italian cruisers are unique in that you can travel at full speed while still remaining undetected as long as you don't fire your guns. So the Trento over there is in fact doing the exact opposite of what you should be doing in an Italian cruiser in order to get the maximum use out of your smokescreen. First, he's not moving at full speed, he has in fact stopped, and is very, very slowly reversing. If he'd carried on going at full speed, he would have easily managed to cross the gap between those two islands and gotten into hard cover. Also, he's firing his guns. Remember, smokescreens don't make you invisible. When you fire your guns, depending on how far away you are from anybody observing the smokescreen, you're going to be detected. Now, 
I don't know precisely what the smoke firing penalty of a Trento class cruiser is, but I know it's a damn sight worse than the smoke firing penalty in a destroyer. So he got detected even though he was in the smoke screen. He spent his time in the smoke screen, not going anywhere, and only started moving forward again after the smoke screen had expired, which means he's now been caught, exposed, crossing open water, broadside on, which means the Trento has effectively just gift wrapped, signed, sealed, and delivered Destroy Hayashimo his first blood award. A perfect example of how not to use an Italian cruiser smokescreen consumable. To be completely fair, I have to admit that these Italian smokes, they, they can be quite counterintuitive at first, because my initial reaction any time I'm thinking of using a smoke generator on a ship is to immediately start cutting the throttle. But that instinct got the Trento killed. Destroyer only just managed to beat the friendly carrier, the Ryujo, to the punch there for the first blood award. The carrier managed to get an early kill on one of the enemy destroyers, but the enemy team have already managed to claw back a destroyer and cruiser kill of their own as well, so it's very much still on. And I'm not quite sure what happened there. Did you see it? I'm pretty much sure all of those shots are going to drop short. It was almost as if he clutched at his mouse somehow when he hit the mouse button which caused all of those shots to suddenly go low, which was a shame because otherwise they were bang on target and he might have delivered a fairly substantial spanking to that Bayern over there as well. At this point in the battle I want to draw your attention to the minimap, specifically the dive bombers launched by the friendly carrier because this was the point in the battle where that carrier really started to piss me off. The team are being capped, there's clearly a destroyer in the cap circle. This is only a tier 6 battle, there's no radar. In the absence of radar, the next best method of spotting a hidden destroyer, in fact a lot of people would say the best method of spotting a hidden destroyer, radar or no radar, is to use carrier aircraft. But look what he's doing with his aircraft. He actually flew his dive bombers past the cap circle, not through it, past it, where an enemy Anshan is busy winning the game in order to go and attack the enemy carrier. And in fact, it's the carrier who surface spots the Anshan. I honestly don't know whether or not that Ryujo is a genius or an idiot. <laughs> Watch the rest of the battle. You guys be the judge. The Anshan, however, has managed to break line of sight to the Ryujo, at least momentarily, by going behind the island. Although it did look like he got clipped, I think, by the Nuremberg on the far side of the cap circle. Now, of course... It's all up to destroy a Hayashimo. And there's his second kill. Proximity detecting. <laughs> a destroyer in a battleship after the destroyer had been proximity detected by a carrier. Not the sort of thing you see happen every day. Um, actually, I'm not entirely convinced that the Anshan was even trying to cap in the first place. I think it's probable that he was trying to slip through the lines and make an end run on the carrier all along. Because the problem was he did it by moving through the cap circle, which kind of telegraphed his location, causing everybody to close in. Well, not everybody. Causing some of the team, at least, to react to the fact that the base was being capped out. Anyway, it's another kill for Destroyer Hayashimo, his second of the match so far, but only the third for his team. The enemy team are up by one kill. They're ahead on points. Although it's interesting to know that all of the cruisers that have been sunk so far have all been Trentos. It seems likely that the match's first victim isn't the only player who's having a bit of a struggle mastering the Italian cruisers. Meanwhile, Destroyer is looking around for his next victim, and there aren't that many options available within the maximum firing range of his 12 14-inch guns. The enemy Ismail, who is giving a very nice, fat, juicy broadside, is just within range, but the accuracy of these 14-inch guns at that kind of range is kind of questionable. Nevertheless, as I mentioned, the Ismail does have a certain number of weaknesses. It has a large citadel, which is fairly exposed. Its side armour isn't fantastic. And its deck armour is also kind of weak, rendering it particularly vulnerable to long-range plunging fire. And while these guns are not known for their great accuracy at this kind of range, the enemy Ismail isn't exactly making things too difficult, and the ship does have a lot of guns, 12 of them. So it can often just be a simple matter of throwing as much shit at the wall as possible and seeing how much of it sticks. So that was a fairly respectable paddling. Not a comprehensive paddling by any stretch of the imagination, but still fairly respectable. The enemy Ismail now has the grand total of 31 seconds to do something other than continue to sail on the same course and speed, 
while destroyer Hayashimo reloads his guns. So of course, he continues to sail on the same course and speed, eating a couple of torpedoes dropped by the Ryujo, and a few more citadels. <laughs> Because some people are just incapable of learning their lesson the first time. Actually, now I come to think of it, some people are incapable of learning the lesson the 30th or 40th time, judging by the exact same behaviour happening with monotonous regularity in even tier 10 battles. Anyway, Destroyer Hayashima was going to have to make a very, very important decision now, and he's turning away, and it looks like he's making the right decision. Advancing any further in that direction would have been risky as all hell, thanks to the Fuso, that he would have been giving broadside to, but it would have been downright suicidal thanks to the addition of the extremely unwelcome presence of that Farragut over there. You don't want to be getting any closer to that smoke screen if you can possibly avoid it. As well as that, everybody else who is heading in this direction with him has long since turned around and is making Billy Big Steps in the other direction. And you can't really blame them. I mean, the, uh, the Fuso over there, who's extremely low on health, even after healing, had up until now been receiving the undivided attention of all of those enemy ships and that was a very 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 nice uh, hit on the Bajoni. The friendlies down here were also accompanied by a Nuremberg but he's lost half of his health and well if the battleships are turning tail and getting the hell out of dodge it's a very very wise cruiser who turns tail and gets the hell out of dodge with them. And while the team are basically more or less kind of in full retreat there is also a Queen Elizabeth turning up to add her firepower to the mix. And that Bajoni over there really doesn't appear to be able to take the hint. I mean, it's not like he's comfortably hidden behind the Farragut smokescreen anymore. He's still spotted. He's clearly still targeted. He's still in open water. He's still giving broadside. And he's already received the spanking of fairly epic proportions from destroyer Hayashimo's 14-inch guns. And yet I can't help but shake the feeling that somehow he's thirsty for more. Destroy Hayashimo. All too happy to oblige. This is just one gun turret, however. Three shells. The cold, dead hand of Stalin reaches up. <laughs> From the deepest pits of hell and guides the shots to the target. Although that was a Russian cruiser, wasn't it? Hmm, perhaps Stalin is conflicted. Eh, uh, probably not really. You can say a lot of things about Stalin, but at least he was an equal opportunities mass murderer. Russians, Poles, Germans, he didn't care, he'd ship you all off to the Gulag. Unless, of course, you're unlucky enough to be a Polish army officer, in which case they just line 8,000 of you up, shoot you in the back of the head, and dump you into a ravine in the forest of Katyn. And then in 1943, when the International Committee for the Red Cross asked to conduct an investigation into the mass murders, you sever all diplomatic relations with the Red Cross, kick them all out of Russia, and blame the Nazis. <laughs> my country, my fucking rules. Getting a bit political for a World of Warships video, aren't you, Jingles? Well, I make that crack about the dead hand of Stalin reaching up from hell and guiding shots to the target in a lot of my videos, and, you know, we have a good laugh at it, but... I think it's important that everybody remembers what an absolute murdering fuckhead the man was. I hope any Russians watching this video aren't offended. This isn't an anti-Russian thing. This is an anti-murdering fuckhead thing. By the way, would everybody on the team please stop dying? What's going on? The Queen Elizabeth just got sunk, and up to the northwest in that chain of islands, there's a friendly Farragut that just lost a gunfight to a Hatsuharu. I didn't even think you were allowed to do that. The last surviving destroyer on the team up ahead, the Eagle, is looking like he's going to be the next victim. He's spotted, getting dive-bombed, getting successfully shot at by the Fuso. Yep, the Fuso's nailed him. It's now four against six, although the Fuso isn't exactly in a good place either. Destroyer, it's time to get your carry pants on. There goes the Fuso. Citadeled for 2,000 damage. <laughs> destroyer. I'd demand a refund for the price of those 14-inch shells if I were you. Right, well there's the Kraken unleashed. Over 100,000 damage done. Five kills. It's five against four. Ooh, here come the rocket attack planes, but it'll be fine. I mean, this is a battleship, right? Yeah, about that. Like I said, deck armour, superstructure, not the greatest on this thing. He took a fair old chunk of damage from, well, the kind of aircraft that aren't normally that much of a threat unless you're in a destroyer. 
Only the one fire, though. Shot out against the Bayern. Yeah. I would have been very surprised if he killed the Bayern with that salvo. These are just 14-inch guns. The Bayern's kind of tough, and it's not that big a target. As battleships go, it's kind of short and squat. Still, he's not the only one shooting at it. It is on fire. Oh, it could be time to ninja another kill. We can get these guns reloaded just a couple of seconds. If the aim is good, this might be kill number six. Oh, you beauty. <laughs> oh, crap. Okay, it's not a full squadron, but torpedo bombers. The Ismail's AA is alright, but he's taken a lot of damage, so he's probably lost a lot of his anti-aircraft guns. Plus, Russian battleships tend to be heavy on the mid-range AA, which usually means that you rarely stop the carrier from making its attack. Although you can punish the aircraft for getting their weapons away, they're pretty much always going to get their weapons away, so... He did well enough to only take the one torpedo there. Oh, there's that Farragut. He's been a real pain in the arse. It'd be nice to kill him. Nope. Just gonna have to settle for the high calibre. 116,000 damage done. Okay, this is... It's less than ideal. The Farragut smoked up. He can't see the Farragut. He's being spotted by the Dallas. So the Farragut is going to be able to aim torpedoes at him once he gets close enough. Which is probably what the Farragut's doing while he's using his guns to burn down the Fuso. The thing is, yes, we can't see you when you're inside a smokescreen, but we can see your shell tracer. And that, boys and girls, <laughs> is kill number seven. Now ask yourself this question. How confident do you think that Dallas is feeling right now? Because he probably really shouldn't be feeling too confident, not with, a, not with an Ismail and a Fuso gunning for him. He's managed to get behind the island, that's given him a chance. And Destroyer here has used his damage control to extinguish a single fire. Problem solved, sir. Believing that the Dallas wouldn't be stupid enough <laughs> <laughs> to waste the opportunity that getting behind the island gave him to get out of there with his health intact. But of course, the Dallas just couldn't resist taking another shot. And that is kill number eight. Enemy carrier is having another go. Oh, just scraped paint with that one. I think the first one was dropped too close to arm and only armed after it had passed the bows. Uh, but the second one was close, but no cigar. You see, a flood at this point would actually be very dangerous for anything other than a Russian battleship because. Russian battleships have unique... They don't have much in the way of consumables. It's usually just damage control and a heal. Which means that they are kind of low on utility. I can remember when they had these Russian battleships on the test server. Um, they were toying with the idea of giving them a radar that only detected other battleships, I think. Something like that. Well, anyway, that, that never happened. So all they really have is a heal and a damage control. Except the damage control is different. It has a vastly reduced cooldown over the damage controls used by, well, everybody else. But the other difference is that it has a limited number of charges. But that's not really a problem for Destroyer right now. He still has a charge remaining, and the most immediate problem that he was facing, the enemy carrier, has finally been sunk by the friendly carrier. He's achieved his match-long mission uh, to take out the enemy carrier, and that just leaves... The Hatsuharu, who was last spotted winning a gunfight against a Farragut, up to the northwest. Now, you're certainly not going to go chasing after a destroyer in a battleship. Especially not a destroyer who was last spotted so long ago that he could quite literally be anywhere. Well, you might go chasing after a destroyer if you're in a German high-tier battleship bristling with secondaries and equipped with the hydroacoustic search consumable. None of which, of course applies to destroyer Hayashimo here, so he's doing the next best sensible thing. There's the Hatsuharu. Okay, that's that's what we call somebody else's problem. And he's slipping into the cap circle. 
this way, if the Hatsuharu does manage to, well, sink everybody else, and that's not impossible, I mean, the Fuso was on low health. Although, the Hatsuharu is currently suffering from every destroyer's worst nightmare, spotted by aircraft. Rocket attack aircraft. <laughs> so, it's not impossible that the Hatsuharu might manage to sink the Ryujo and the Fuso. It's just kind of unlikely. But in the unlikely event... Oh, no, we're not going to get killed number nine. <laughs> that would have been fairly amazing. In the unlikely event that the Hatsuharu does manage to sink, Destroyer's remaining teammates, he's going to do the sensible thing. Shoot at him, wherever possible, and get his ass into that cap circle. Although with less than a minute of this game remaining, even if the Hatsuharu managed to do the impossible and sink both the Fuso and the Ryujo, it probably still wouldn't be enough for him to win this game on point. The Fuso has just unloaded, shaved off almost all of his health, that's just made it easy for the Ryujo, and that is game over. Eight kills and the high caliber award to go with the first blood for Destroyer Hayashimo in the Tier 6 Russian battleship, the Ismail. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.